Hello everyone, this is Omar. Welcome to Omar Draws, where I draw stuff and I talk about my drawings. And sometimes I'll just give you guys a few tips here and there. This time around, I'm feel like I feel like doing like a full-blown tutorial on this uh, class assignment that I'm actually working on. So I am a concept art student at school called CG Spectrum. And um, for this assignment, we pretty much have to create like a stylized environment scene. And um, yeah, as you can see, there's a project brief right in front of my screen. So uh, this is obviously this is just like, you know, it's not a real email from a real client. It's just a scenario that was given to all the students. And kind of just like uh, go over the keywords up here just to figure out what and where to start with. So um, <clears throat> so this game will be a platformer style 3D game. The theme will be centered around a prehistoric timeline with a protagonist that is a caveman or a cave woman. The visual aesthetics should be heavily stylized and stay away from realism. And this is really important, right? Because even though I do a lot of photorealistic stuff, um, this time around, I have to be, have to do it stylized because if you have a client asking you to do uh, to produce some pieces of artwork in a specific style, so you have to be like very thorough and you have to make sure that you're listening to them. Um, so moving forward, the technology will be very rudimentary and use basic raw materials like wood, stone, and handmade rope. You can build complex contraptions of as long as they look like they were made from raw materials. The space that we need to develop will be the home base for our cave person. We want to have two access points where the protagonist can enter and exit their floating island home base. And we want to include things like cave shelter, fire pit, weapon rack, hide stretcher, and things like that. So I was actually given with a, I was actually provided with a 3D base model up here. This kind of just showed like uh, the basic elements that you might want to include in the scene. So like this up here would be, uh, would be like the little cave. Then we got some trees up here and then like access points and these two little cubes up here just represent one of the other things that we could include in the scene so what i did was that before committing to a specific uh design i felt like i should probably do like six of these first and then like just see which one works out the best so i actually copy pasted this 3d block out six times and i'm just gonna like sketch on top of it um and see what i come up with Okay, so the one thing that I really pay attention to is finding references. So these are the references that I first had in the very beginning. And as I'm working towards my project, um, I'm, I'm going to keep updating this file as well. But just like simple references of how like a broken tree looks like and, you know, some weapons up here and then tree roots, you know, a little fire pit. And then I thought of maybe like including a, a, an, a cave made of ice or something, but I kind of felt like uh, not doing it. Mostly I stuck around with trees and rocks and things like that. So always look up references, you know, they're super helpful. It really helps in like taking your piece to the next level. Okay, so like I jumped right in with my sketch and one thing that I really paid attention to was that I had my references open at all times on my other monitor. And then I was constantly looking at them trying to like look at all the forms and the shapes and just come up with like some unique looking designs um and this was more like a warm-up exercise for me as well just because you know i i don't really draw islands like that you know i've never drawn environment like that as well it's probably like my first time that i was doing something like this i've always taken the easy way out and i just went to 3d this model everything out and then like take a screenshot render it out and then bring it in photoshop so uh, at this point, I kind of had like to work a little bit harder than I usually do. The good thing though, was that I was provided with a 3D base model. So that kind of like solved all of my perspective issues. But even then just coming up with ideas can just be so difficult at times. And also, you know, sometimes then you start being hard on yourself because you feel like the drawings that you're making are not like that cool looking. They're just pretty simple. But even if it looks simple, it's always good to just, you know, throw in all your ideas on a piece of paper or on a tablet or Photoshop, whatever. You get the point. Because what you can do is that once you get in the momentum, once you get the flow going on, then you can like pick and choose, you know, different elements from different thumbnails and like combine them together. 
and that's what i'm probably that's what i probably ended up doing on this one you know i first um had all these references open and then i was just experimenting with like the things i want to include the things i don't want to include and whatever things that i included in, in one of my thumbnails i tried not to use the same thing in the second or third thumbnail you know just exploring all the different options up here and it's very important you do that you know because thumbnailing is it's very underrated you know um uh, it, it just really opens up your your mind to all the possibilities right you're not just sticking to one one unique design you know you're just exploring everything out there and i'm gonna be honest with you by the time i was done with three of these i was getting tired i'm like holy shit man i can't i can't do this anymore i'm running out of ideas but i still went with it just for the sake of doing six thumbnails i still uh, i still just kept drawing you know kept looking at my references and trying to really paying close attention to them and trying to see what i can do to make sure that i'm having unique looking designs and you know i feel like with number four when i started on that the cave looked pretty weird but then i was i really liked how the tree was coming along because i found a really good reference for those you know the swirly patterns of some sort and those big leaves and things like that i honestly didn't really want to at first i was thinking of you know like in the project brief it said that, that there should be two access points like two areas where the where the cavemen or the cave women could like climb up the floating mount floating uh, floating island and i thought it'd be better if i don't use anything um man-made it would be nice to have like something some organic way to like climb up that that island and so i ended up using a lot of roots here and there like tree roots and things like that and i kind of liked it i liked the effect it was giving it looked more more natural but then it also looked a little weird um but it all worked out it honestly all worked out you know and that's where you know you always want to use like good references right you just don't want to rely on your imagination like whatsoever because it's really hard to come up with like something cool from your imagination like i haven't been in a cave i mean i don't know what a caveman does you know i don't know what an island looks like i don't know what all these cool looking trees looks look like because i haven't seen them in real life right even if i have seen them in real life it's not like i'm gonna remember every single detail so that's why you always want to you know spend a couple of hours get some good references and then go from there they all kind of look pretty similar to each other it's just little things here and there that i decided to change um and after looking at these for a while i kind of i kind of felt like i wanted to go somewhere in the direction of number three and number five um i feel like for the cave itself the little rock structure for the cave looked pretty cool and for the trees i was thinking of including this little swirly pattern and then also this other tree up here it looks very rough right now and weird but i had this really cool reference reference that i found for these tree trunks um it was something like this i'm not sure what these trees are called but they look so cool so like this guy right here and this one so these two are the ones that i'm thinking of putting up and then like just simple vegetation here and there uh, so there's that and so what I can do, and here's the thing, right? I mean, when you have all these options, you know, you don't have to stick with just one. You know, you can like mix and match and like take a few things here and there and then make that your final drawing. So what I'm going to do next is that I'm just going to single out these two sketches and put them on top of each other. And then I'm going to start chiseling away and then come up with a final sketch. So stick around for that process. All right, so... Yeah, so I overlapped them on top of each other. And then this is where I kept like those, both of those sketches on separate layers. And I did erase away a little bit in the beginning, but then I thought to myself, you know what, instead of erasing away stuff, let's just jump right into it and just do like a, a semi clean line drawing on top of it. I mean, I wasn't really doing like a super clean line drawing because the, the end product, like what I envision is that I don't want any of my black lines to show. So at this point, it's just about figuring out all my assets like that I'm going to include in this environment design. And so I really like the the shape of the cave. I mean, it looks it looks pretty basic and it just looks like it's made out of a rock. But, you know, I still liked it. You know, it's I feel like sometimes it's OK to go simple. You know, simplicity is is, is really good. You don't want to like go too complex and then end up making something that just doesn't make any sense. So. 
but then you know you constantly see me also like you know hi putting up my references on the side now i did have my references on my separate monitor but then i also brought them in photoshop every now and then because then i was able to like flip the image uh like mirror image it and then it was it was really good that way you know i could like see it from you know different angles and also every now and then i could um also turn it into black and white if i need needed to i think i did that in the rendering stage um but right now it's just it's just nice you know you can just have an image on the side and just just draw from it you know and that's what it means right having references you know it's like you know people might think you're copying it but it's not really copying i mean you're just you're just adding everything together to your scene right um so yeah this was a very fun process i, I enjoyed this part of the drawing because i kind of like already figured out the things i I was slowly figuring out the things that I want to include and I don't want to include. Like I, I excluded like the, the bushes in the back of the cave because I kind of felt like it looks a little too busy if I do that. So I had like, you know, trees without any leaves instead. And then I found this cool image of like a broken tree and like all this information that I get from these references that there's just absolutely no way for me to know just from my imagination, right? It's only a handful of people out there on, in this world who have crazy imagination that can do awesome cool badass looking stuff but for the rest of us you know it's all we, we can just like eyeball it you know you're just gonna have to like look for good references um one thing that i also made sure is that i kind of played around with my line weight a little bit also had it thick in some areas and thinner in other areas it just adds a little bit of three dimension to your sketch itself without even adding any value and i feel like it's really important to play around with line weight but the main focus, as I mentioned before, was just like um, having these really large roots, you know, coming around the the island, you know, so that that's like the way the cave person could like climb up the island. And so I had like this one big root on the left side and then I have another one on the right side. So, so yeah, I mean, um, that was it, honestly. Yeah, I mean, I really enjoyed working on this. It's because I've kind of felt like everything started to make sense at this point. And I and I was always I also had like my 3D model in the back because, you know, I had to check my perspective and my scale every now and then because I wanted to make sure that it didn't look off. Um, but yeah, here's another picture of another tree that I found. I think it's I don't even know what this tree is like half of these references. I don't even know where they're from. It's just like it's just they just, they just look so cool. And I save them. And I'm, and I'm going to use them right so i did that for the tree so I, I used the tree trunk of this tree and then i had a different image of like those big tree roots that i incorporated to this specific tree up here uh, and that's what it is you know you just take your time just really trust in the process you know it, you know it starts off really rough it starts off looking like shit looking like crap but you just don't have but just don't give in just just keep doing it you know and that's that's what it takes you know patience is is like a main factor when it comes to making a good piece of art right and with life in general you just gotta have patience man i mean if you don't have the patience to do certain things it's just gonna be really hard for you to figure stuff out right and and that's what i did you know i really just studied all these images that i had these reference images and then did it to the best of my ability right i mean you can do just do the best you can do i mean no one's asking you to be a pro at this kind of thing overnight right and it's impossible for you to be good at this overnight so do the best that you can do i mean use as many references as you can and then call it a day you know and go to sleep after that don't stress over things that are not under your control but yeah so i feel like we're almost done with the sketch part uh just a few things here and there that i added it raised a few elements here and there as well but yeah i think i would call it finish at this point all right guys so this is what i've got so far with my sketch so as you as you all can see um i really went overboard with the details on this i'm um, usually that's not a good thing because i feel like there's just so much noise everywhere <laughs> Um, and I feel like I don't really have a real clear focal point uh, But this is where I feel like I could really play around with my lighting and really center it around this area and make everything else Like pretty dark that way the main focus stays around the cave up here But the reason why I made this these big roots is that I really wanted to show that there could be two access points to this little uh, floating island up here like you know you 
person living here could either come up through the roots from this area up here or from this area up here initially i was thinking of doing like a rope of some sort but then i thought let me just do something different and i kind of felt like doing these roots would be really cool and you know, i was constantly going back and forth with these references as well you know i was copy pasting them on my photoshop file as i was going and yeah and that's how it is man i mean don't don't um depend on your imagination when you're doing stuff like that i mean i've never been on an island like that i've never been i've never seen like these big trees and stuff so it's always good to have like a good reference um but this should be all for the sketch part and just do it just to do a quick recap i mean we started off with our six thumbnails and then what i did i chose number three and number five and then i put them on top of each other and then on top of that we did a sketch on top of it now usually i do a line art drawing but i feel like uh just jumping directly to value blocking and then color is because i'm going for more of a stylized look and i won't really have any of my black lines showing so there really isn't any point in doing a line work on top of it uh, but this should be all for this part and in the next part i'm gonna go over blocking everything out in value and i will see you guys in the next one